Hello there, my name is Sharon Middoff, and I have geared my multicultural lesson plan towards Egyptian cartouches. Egyptian uh, history and culture has always been an interest of mine, and so I thought we would gear our lesson plan here towards third and fourth graders, and we would try to make our own version of an Egyptian cartouche using modeling clay. But first, before we do that, let's talk about what an Egyptian cartouche is. They are nameplates that contained Egyptian hieroglyphics. Because back in the day, they did not use alphabets of what we know as letters today. So instead, they used symbols. So as you can see, for example, like C is like a little cup shape the letter D equates to a hand. M is like a little owl. P is a little square. And then T you have like, oh, I, I think of that as like a little taco shape. So each letter corresponds with a picture in the hieroglyphic chart. And usually, they, well, they date back to the fourth dynasty under a pharaoh named Sneferu. And their purpose was to identify kings, queens, and any type of royalty. And each were unique because inside of them contained their names of the pharaohs and such. And some pharaohs even wore like an amulet style cartouche to protect them against evil spirits in their current life and afterlife. So how were they made? They were usually carved. And like I said, here's an example. And the significance of the design is the oval part, it represents a rope that's being tied together at the base, at the bottom. And the Egyptians believed that the rope circle in, represented everything by the sun and also symbolized the king's power over the universe. So in my lesson plan, what I would first do is pass this sheet out and what it has is a blank cartouche and then the matching chart where the student could simply just look and spell their name and draw the pictures within. And what I would suggest is just doing it in pencil and first and foremost, nothing has to be perfect. There's no right or wrong here. The bottom line is just to have fun with it. And sometimes, you know, it takes one or two times to, to get something that you're pleased with. So this is our first chance at it. And so when I did mine, I kind of did mine in pencil first and then I outlined it and spelled out my name going across with the S-H-A-R and the O-N. So for this purpose, we're gonna keep it simple and I chose to just spell King, K-I-N-G, according to the picture. So with the supplies that we're using, we're using some modeling magic, and I found some that's kind of this rust color, um, kind of a rolling, little mini rolling pin, a little carving tool. Interesting here is a little uh, bottle co cookie cutter, which I'll show you what we'll use in a minute a pencil, we have an ink pen, glue, some jute, rope, scissors, and clothes pin. So the first thing that we'll do before we touch the modeling is maybe make the little rope part here. And as you can see what we used, oh and also a toothpick, what we used is a toothpick and what we did is just put a little drop of glue at the end and this might even take a couple times to do, so I usually just grab it right here with my thumb and then wind it tightly. And you kind of want to wind it so that the toothpick doesn't show, but the toothpick is the same color as the jute, so even if it's showing, it really doesn't matter. And then what you want to do at the end is take one clothespin just to kind of hold it in place. And then when you get to the end of where you want, you can just put a little dab of glue here and get it where you need it to be. And then also 
just clip that as well. So once you've got that wound, and like I said, it's not perfect. You can see mine's a little loose. It could be a little tighter, but you just simply just lay it down just to dry for a little bit, and then we're gonna cut the ends off. So with my modeling clay, we have it, I just simply took off a little piece here and I have my little rolling pin and I'm kind of just gonna lay it, roll it over to get a smooth surface. And then this is where the cookie cutter comes in. It's not exact, but it's it gets close. So we're just gonna simply just cut our shape in and then kind of tear away the extra. And then once we have that, just hold your finger here and pop that out. So it's not the exact shape of a cartouche, but it gets pretty close. So then what you'll want to do is use your carving, your little carving tool, and kind of just cut off the bottom part here. So we're going to cut off this portion right here. And then with this piece, we can still use this piece, and even the pieces that you cut away, the little scraps, we're gonna try to make this little part here at the bottom. And all that is is just kind of rolling it in between your hands and just modeling it to the shape that you want. I think the best thing about modeling clay is it is fun to use and it's forgiving, and I think students would have fun with this. And it's a little bit pliable and easier to work with. Um, and like I said, it's forgiving. So if, if you have too much or if it's too thick, or th you just roll it out and make it thinner. And see, you can see here, mine's a little bit too long. So I'm just gonna cut off a little piece more and just stick it at the bottom here. So, and then once you, you're kind of happy with your shape, you just kind of press it to, push it together and then it'll stick together, just like that. Okay, so then and, what, and it's okay if you can see the seam because you're gonna glue your little rope part over it. So then, now we can uh, move on to the letter part. So again, we're gonna, you just look at the chart and once you've filled out this part, you kind of already have used this as your guide when you're transferring it onto your, your clay portion. So, um, you can just do that with either your carving knife and it gets a little, you can make your little shape and it's kind of dots. And what I found is if, if you don't like it, then you just rub it over with your thumb and then go over it again. So like I said, it's, it's kind of forgiving and just have some patience with it. So when I've made the I and then the N is just a little wavy W and I'm just going fast just so that you don't have to watch me be intricate here. But like I said, when you're really doing it, you can take your time and, and, and have fun with it. So once you kind of have figure out that you really like that final design, then you can kind of go over it with the black marker. And it might take a couple times to go over it to get what you want. And I'm just going over it more and more, over and over. Obviously, the more you do it, the darker the line will be. And so then, what we're going to do from there is glue our little toothpick on here. And just cut that off. And this is probably where a teacher would come in because cutting the little sharp part might be tricky. So I would just call or I would circle and hopefully have parent helpers that day. And then just glue that part on. And then we're also gonna glue a thin line around with the jute. And I would have these pre-cut as well. And then you would end up with your little cartouche. And if you really wanted to make it like a little hanging ornament, you could just simply take a little straw and just poke a hole at the very top all the way through. And then you can 
hang it with the jute once every the modeling clay does dry so overnight it'll become a little harder and then you can just hang it and this is what you would end up with so hopefully you enjoyed this lesson um i hope it's fun for third and fourth graders and you learned a little bit more about egyptian cartouches thank you